I got a question from Marcus Chow about inverse functions, uh, and that is fantastic because he looked at all my videos, but he still had a problem, and he sent me a message. So thank you, Marcus, and of course everybody else can do the same thing. So the function given is um, f(x) equals x over 3x minus 1, and indeed that is an extended question when it comes to inverse functions. Yeah. So the question is, what is the inverse function? Okay, now first of all, your first step, let me just put a big O1 there. Your first step always is, rather than using the fx notation, you gotta say, so y equals x over 3x minus one, yeah? So instead of fx, it now says y equals x over 3x minus one. And then your second step, when you're finding the inverse of a particular function, is that you swap x and y. What do I mean with that? Well, the y then becomes an x, yeah? And wherever it says x, it becomes a y. So y over 3y minus 1. And then your third step and your last step, yeah? And that is, especially in this example, the most complicated step, is now you've got to make y the subject of that function. You have to make it say y equals and then in terms of x. All right, and how do I do that? How do I make y the subject of this function? Well, first of all, I gotta get rid of that particular fraction, right? And how do I get rid of a fraction? Well, I get rid of a fraction by multiplying it by the denominator, yeah? Because if I do that, then that fraction is gone. It will just say y. However, that is only going to be equal if I do the same thing on the other side. So also on the left side of my equation, I'm going to multiply it by 3y minus 1. Okay, what is that going to look like then? So my first step, so x times 3y, 3yx minus 1 times x minus x, and that's going to equal y. That is my first step. And I have to make y the subject. Okay, which means that it should say y on one side and all the rest on the other side. Okay, so I have a term with a y here, but I need to put that y on the right side, take it away and put it, well, you're actually not putting anything here, but it says minus y then, and that equals, and the x needs to go to the other side, so minus x, I plus it by x on both sides, so it's gonna say, 3yx minus y equals x, yeah? So I've got now two terms with y on the left side and one term with x on the right side. And now the last, eh, well not almost the last step anyway, that's a difficult step, those two terms. What do I do now to get rid of that 3x basically, yeah? And this is what you have to do, is you have to factorize it. What is the common factor? If I look at these two terms, what is the common factor? Well, they both have a y, don't they? So if I factorize it, I take out the common factor, y, put some brackets there, and it's gonna say what in my brackets? 3x minus one, and that should equal x. Do we understand that? Because if I would expand it again, y times 3x is 3yx, eh, or 3xy, and y times minus one, that's your minus y. And that still equals x. Fantastic, because then finally, my final step is, to get rid of the 3x minus one, I divide it by 3x minus one. Only equal if I do the same thing on the other side, yeah? So, uh, if I do that, I take away that common factor. So what is it going to say then? y equals x over 3x minus 1, all right? And that is the inverse, yeah? So, f minus 1x equals x over 3x minus 1. Now, in this particular case, the inverse function is indeed the same as the original function. And sometimes that is the case, yeah? So don't worry too much about that. Difficult question. However, three clear steps you have to take when you're finding the inverse. First of all, rather than fx, you say y equals, and then the function. Then you swap all the x's and the y's, yeah? so x equals y over 3y minus one. And then you have to rearrange it. First of all, get rid of the fraction, multiply both sides by denominator. Start rearranging all your terms with y. In this case, I put it on the left side, all the other terms on the right side. Now, I have two terms with y, so I factorize it. 
Yeah, and then I divide both sides by what was in the brackets 3x minus 1 in this particular example. Okay, I hope that was useful. You can check my Facebook page explainingmaths.com or my website www.explainingmaths.com for more resources and activities and you can ask me questions anytime. I hope that was useful. Have a good day. Bye-bye.